Hello friends, welcome to the Nova Coach Podcast. I'm your host, Suzanne Kohlberg, joined today by Shannon, the anti-hustle business coach. And as soon as I saw anti-hustle, I was like, I don't need to hear anything more. Like, let's let's chat. <laughs> because, <laughs> so when you listen, if you're listening to this and you're new in business or what I lovingly refer to as a wannapreneur, I think this is the show for you because so many of us go from training to training going the next one, the next one. And it's like, yeah, but do you actually have anybody who's paying you? Because that's a definition of a business. Otherwise you have an expensive hobby and there's no shame nor shade. I've been there. Potentially Shannon's been there. We'll get into it, but you know, there's that, or maybe you're pivoting. So, you know, when you do a pivoting business, sometimes there can be like a a hiatus in the sales department, which is, And then sometimes you're like, oh, maybe this pivot wasn't the right thing. And you're trying to like turn the jumbo jet mid-flight, you know, not not necessarily the best idea. Or maybe you're just burnt out and exhausted. And I don't know how much you know about the origin of the term burnout, Shannon. I ended up on a total tangent today, you know, as I do at times. Apparently it wasn't even recognized in, as a, like a diagnosis or a term or something until quite recently it was just like a slang that kind of got adapted I thought that was so cool um in terms of just because it's so normalized they're like oh that's just part of the process well I wonder too if it's just there are some things where you know like say a person literally can't get out of bed they're like lovingly suggest they go and get help with that but we tend to wear burnout like a badge of honor like mm-hmm. this is my sixth cup of coffee for the day and I'm so wired and I only got two hours sleep last night. Oh, look at you go. Like, and we're mm. not ever pausing to say that could be just as unhealthy as not being able to get out of bed, but because you are like, what is it called? Functional or highly functioning, yeah. it gets dismissed. This is just, it's this like the crux of my work is that like the hyper productivity is so rewarded And it's unfortunate because hustling works, right? So like it works and you can make a lot of money hustling and it's also not sustainable and you're going to lead to burnout, but it's just like this pride, like it's just like a function of capitalism, right? Where it's like the hyper productivity is rewarded, um, corporate culture and being the first one there and the last one to leave right? Like it's just, it's so rewarded. So I feel like it's just like baked into the whole process where they're like, of course we don't have a word for it. Cause this is just what we do. Have you, do you watch Emily in Paris at all? No, I don't. So I'm kind of addicted to that show. I'm frustrated with it at the moment, but addicted, but basically she's just gone to Rome and she's gone somewhere for lunch. It's this venue and they're like, oh, it's one of the staff members birthdays. So there's no work and we're all going to celebrate the birthday. And she's like, oh, so like what is, which milestone is it? And you're like, what do you mean? She's like, which milestone birthday? Oh no, it's just her birthday today. So you're like the whole place is shutting down so you can go and have wine and whatever and celebrate this person's birthday. And they're like, yeah, like we wouldn't do it any other way. And I was, she, Emily from the States was horrified. And part of me was horrified because that would never happen here but also cheering because why does it have to be a milestone or you've been at this organization for x number of years or whatever why not just like you know it's your birthday let's all go celebrate i just thought that was epic three three right like it has to be like 40 or 45 or right but like who celebrates their 33rd birthday (laughs) well that's also too like when you look at any sort of milestone so at the time of recording is i'm my aim is to get my youtube channel to a thousand subscribers and I was celebrating the other day at 599. And my friend was like, that's such an awkward thing. It's not even a milestone. I'm like, it totally is. And she's For like, why can't we wait to 600? <laughs> and I was like, but why? Why does it have to be an even number? Or why does it yeah. have to be after this much time? And as you said, like hustling and stuff works, but it's yeah. not sustainable. And it makes people think that in order to be successful, this is what I have to put myself through. And then what relationship or connection do you have with your family, if any, (laughs) because you're always tied to your computer or your phone or your device or you're checking your notifications or your DMs or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what I find too is that oftentimes it happens because people don't know what to even focus on. So they're just doing so much shit that they don't even need to be doing 
that's not going to move the needle. Like they're fucking around in Canva and the banner's probably going to suck anyway. <laughs> Across the branding. Right? Like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> but at least they have like something to show or they've been screwing around, right? Like in their website, but they've done nothing to build relationships online. They don't have anybody in their audience. No one gives a shit about their website because they haven't done anything to build their community but because they can they can check off a box or they have something tangible to show like you can't show dms of you like posting and trying to right but you can show a an ugly banner (laughs) but also too and i wonder your thoughts on this canva doesn't reject you like if i spend all day fucking around in canva i I have something to show for it i feel a sense of achievement accomplishment because i've done something Whereas if I go to a networking meeting or if I do a sales call, or if I do a direct outreach and say, hey, Shannon, I've got this new cool offer. Are you interested? No. Ooh. Hey, Sarah, I've got this new. No. <laughs> hey, if it, whatever it is, no. There's that the rejection, especially for those right. of us who are newer, newer spicy. Like when I heard about rejection yeah. sensitivity, I was like, oh, there's a name for it. Oh, my goodness. Right. I thought I was oh. just weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, and that's just, that's a huge part of, of becoming a successful business owner too, is you have to stop giving a shit and have to let that ego piece completely go so that you can just keep showing up and showing up like any big corporations, like I don't give a shit if you don't like my hamburgers. Cause there's plenty of people who do like my hamburgers. So if you don't like my commercial, then don't fucking watch it. <laughs> right. But like, I'm going to make more commercials for people who do like my product and, and you, you have let, and that's like a mindset piece. That's a nervous system regulation piece. That's, you know, just like a really big, it's a big problem for, for neurospicy people, especially. And I to, think to really be able to show up even when, their feelings are hurt, <laughs> right? In the beginning, so your pool is quite small, as you said. Yeah. Like nobody yeah. knows your name and nobody's glad you came. <laughs> it's the opposite of cheers. <laughs> but so when you do have people saying, I don't like this, I'm not interested or whatever, it it, it hurts. And also it feels <sighs> like that's everybody. Whereas when you think of a big right. brand like Coca-Cola or Oprah Winfrey or Nike or Apple, like I love my iPhone. I'm like an iPhone person through and through. I have a friend who's like, how do you use that bullshit? It's awful. But because there's like how many million people buying Apple, they don't care. Right. But when right. you start out and your audience is kind of small, you know, you you kind of need to like grow that pile of no's. Yeah. And then have it be that similar thing, like, oh, okay, cool, next. Like, it's right. in, you know, well, you know, that instead of what I do see people do, instead, they try and change their offer. They're like, okay, yeah. so say you say to me, Suzanne, that time doesn't work for me. Oh, what time would work for you? So I, I'm so guilty of this. In Early in my business, I change the time. Oh, it's too expensive. Yeah. I drop the price. Oh, I want this. I add all these inclusions. And then... When and then they still say no <laughs> or the truth is they didn't know how to say no because i right. work with people please right. and overgivers so like it's kind of you know if you are sold on the thing that you're doing and mm-hmm. you trust that your thing's amazing and there are going to mm-hmm. be people who don't like it aren't interested doesn't make sense to whatever sometimes as you said your ugly canva banner is this or sometimes a little tweak can make all the difference like sometimes you are unclear but sometimes it's just like you're trying to convince which is never fun or you're talking to people who it's not a fit for like i'm a sweary fairy if i go to a church it's unlikely that people are going to work with me not always some religious people are down for it (laughs) in general or if i go to um somewhere where they're all made up and have Chanel and Gucci and whatever. And I'm like, Hey, <laughs> they're like, you know, so it's yeah. like, where are you hanging out? And also who are you getting the business advice from? Because right. the person who's telling you to have this beautiful branding and stuff, chances are that's their business. The person who's like, you need to get on the front page of Google is going to be telling you that because that's their business. And also what fucking category are you getting on the first page of Google in? Like, I love it when people go, I can get you on the first page of Google. I'm like, yeah, but for what? Like you yeah, know, for sure. I'm a number one bestseller on Amazon. In what category? Yeah. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know what, going back to like, you know, how connected we are and how much our feelings get hurt when somebody says no, right? It's because we we have been taught to be employees. We haven't been taught to be entrepreneurs. And so when we work for somebody else, they tell us how valuable our time is, right? They tell us, I'm going to pay you this much an hour. This is going to be your salary. So we don't have to deal with that. And then we are told it's, it's kind of fucked how this is happening in the industry, right? Like we are told that this is your passion, that this, your business is like your heart and this is like soul led and heart led. Right. So of course your feelings are going to get involved and you've created this program. That's my baby. And I'm going to price it. And then when you say no, I'm so fucking crushed because I've poured everything into this. Like this is my creation mm. and we haven't, you know, we haven't built our chops and like our uh, resiliency in business enough yet to be able to separate ourselves from our program yes. and our work. Right. And so like, and it's like charge what you're worth. And that's one of the worst fucking things that we were taught because this just, it just becomes this snowball. So like, of course, when somebody says no, it's, it hits a core wound of not being valued, of not being seen, of not being respected, right? Like there's so much like, oh, somebody doesn't see me and my value and my brilliance yet again that's what i was like now here's childhood trauma coming in school school <laughs> yard right like attachment shit like attachment theory shit like so our core wounds are being activated in our businesses but no one mentions this everyone's just like start a business create a package no one like lets us know that this is one of the biggest personal development adventures <laughs> that you could ever go on because you have to work through being rejected and not being seen and right. And like using your voice and, and believing in yourself, you have to believe in yourself before anybody else believes in you. Right. And like, if you're walking around with confidence issues, that's going to be really fucking hard. Yeah. So then you keep in, right. Like you keep investing, you keep investing and then you see shiny marketing I'm a marketing coach. I'm a business coach. Of course, my marketing is going to pull people in, right? But like if you're a health coach or a relationship coach, you're never going to have the level of content that I have. But you're so drawn to, and it's so interesting because the shiny, sexy Eiffel Tower, like of course that we're a capitalist society, like of course that draws us in, but that might not be who we actually are. Even like us, you know, like the granola people, like I buy shit off, Am like this is like a whole Amazon outfit that I'm wearing, right? Like, but like, I'm still, ooh, that's fancy. I don't want any of that, but it's still fancy, right? So it pulls us in, but then we're like investing, investing, over investing. Now I'm just falls deep in business debt, but I don't have a business to show for it. Oh, so many things to say. So many things. <laughs> Firstly, I loved the part, and I don't think anyone's ever brought this forward. I'm over 400 episodes into the show, but where we're taught to be employees. And when you're an employee, it's a totally different mindset. Your yep. ass isn't on the line in the same yep. way. Like, it, it, you know, obviously you have KPIs and things to reach and whatever. Otherwise, you'd be a shit employee and they get someone else. But you don't make the decisions normally. You're like, here's your list of things to do. Go do them. And for those of us who are neurospicy, when we don't have someone giving us the list of things to do, left our own devices, I'm suddenly cleaning out the lint filter on my dryer for the second time this week. <laughs> but also, you don't know which things are going to work. And as you said, there's the bright, shiny things online and people are promising this. You're investing and you're investing and you're investing. And often, depending on who you invest with, you... You, you get your tech stack or you get your whatever to look like yeah. theirs. Like sometimes I can yep. literally scroll Instagram and go, they're working with this person, they're working with this person, yep. the color, the <laughs> font, the words. You even start to sound like them. It's yeah. weird. Like, do you remember that Lemmings game? Yeah. 
Oh, no. I'm showing my age here. So there's this game and basically there's these lemmings and you give them a job to do and they all follow each other. And if you don't, if you're not careful, like one of them will march off a cliff and they're just all marching off the cliff, Uh like one after the other. But, you know, it's kind of like whoever you're working with and like this isn't cookie cutter, it's personalised to you, but everyone's doing exactly the same freaking thing. Yeah. You can spend a lot of money. Like if your business coach has one of these big platforms like Kajabi or something, which is, you know, 150 US a month and you don't yet have a paying client, usually you're using their affiliate links. So not only are they getting you paying them to be coached with them, but then they're getting money out of you six other ways as well. And it's like, obviously you need some way for people to pay you. You need some way to deliver your service and whatever, but it, you know, it's finding what works for you. And a lot of these things, like people spend so much money on a logo and a tagline and a website and branding colors, but nobody's ever paid them yet. (laughs) And And it's like, like, (laughs) that's going to change. Like it changes. Look, I, I mean, it, it, when people just like focus, this is, this is also why my business and like this was born was because I, I fell in the line. So I started coaching in 2015. So that was Marie Forleo, right? Like Marie Forleo, Amy Porterfield, um, Mel Farr, who's no longer coaching, but like very present seven figure, right? Like girl bosses, which is like hustling in skirts essentially. And, but nobody, I bought it. Like I bought it hook, line and sinker. I didn't do the WordPress, but I, and I didn't like, I didn't get sucked in as far as a lot of people did. Um, but if, as soon as you have a WordPress website, you're fucked because you can't make your own sales pages without messing up some plugin. And now your whole website's down. So then you have to hire your designer again. And like, you can't, if you want to change the price, if you want to change this thing, right. And no one is just transparency is such a huge value of mine because there's so much smoke and mirrors in this industry. And no one tells you how big their ad budget is, how much they're spending on team, how yes. much they're actually taking home. Oh, I had a six figure month. Well, how much did you just spend in ads? Oh, we spent six figures. So you made zero fucking dollars. There was a lady, her name's failing me right now, but she did a real raw, honest behind the scenes of her podcast. Cause she was really in the girl boss culture. And then she had her awakening yeah. And she was like, I was bringing in a million dollars top line revenue. Like I was having a million dollar years in my business, but my take home was 50,000. By the time I paid my ads and my team and the people who were coaching for me. And it's kind of like, and then the stress, because it's like, if you know, if, if you, the operating cost for your business is a couple hundred thousand a month before anything. And it's like, yeah, I just think, as you said, people don't What's show that. And, and, and also too, yeah. when you do, I'm not knocking, like if you like Marie Folio, Amy Porterfield, like you do you, but the strategies they're teaching, they have a team, they have a budget, they have an ad spend, they, they have, have all these writers and you're they're a solopreneur. Yes. And it's kind of like, you know, and then, then sometimes they're like, oh, when you answer the email say, oh, this is Stacy from the, you know, whatever. And it's like, you know, see so putting on these different hats and it's like, and also, yeah. is that even your dream? Like I remember right. when I got into business, I don't know about you, so I'll ask you this question next. But for me, um, I just wanted to replace the income I was earning in my nine to five. Mm. Uh, like, you know, maybe make a little bit more it would be nice. But I never wanted this seven figure empire. Like, no, I, I don't want to yeah. have a team. I, I got into my business. I coach because I enjoy coaching. I don't want to be at the top of this weird pyramid with all these sub coaches under me. And then I'm not actually doing any coaching myself because all I'm doing is managing the CEO and CFO and COO. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like back in the day. Okay. So my company, I live in Italy, but my company and most of my clients are based in the United States, but I have, you know, clients who are in, England and Spain and, you know, all over the world. Um, but back then it was okay. Six figures. Like that seems like a good benchmark, right? I had never made six figures in my, 
in my life. I, I was coming out of, so I used to be a hairstylist. I was a counselor. I was a, a waitress at a yacht club while I was starting my um, business. I was living in the Cayman Islands and I just didn't want to ever answer to anybody ever again. <laughs> That's why I started my business. <laughs> like I was just done working for other people. And so it's, it's kind of moved into, and like, yeah, I have like, you know, it'd be nice if I made 200,000, 250 K us. Right. But like, that's also, I do profit first. And so mm -hmm. I have a very conservative, uh, salary that I'm paid. And most of the money sits in the business, to be honest. Um, and so it's more just like, I want, I don't want a large business that doesn't feel good. So I want to make a lot of money. I love flying first class. I love five-star restaurants and five-star hotels. Like I love bougie shit like that as I'm wearing my Amazon clothes. <laughs> I don't it's, care. It's all about like what you like. And sometimes it can be like, yeah. I really like this, but in other cases, I like that. <laughs> right. Right. Like I want to be comfortable. Um, while you fly first class and eat your bougie. While food. I fly first class, I'm the person that they're like, wow, they'll just let anybody in here. Like I'm the grungy one coming in, <laughs> but I love that level of service and just feeling taken care of. Um, so that's the life that I want to live. I want to be able to travel. I want to put money away for retirement, right? So, I mean, if that's like a $250,000 a year business, a half, but I don't want, I don't want all the trappings that come with those higher level of businesses. And so that's what I'm paying attention to. I love of, that. I love the right. Like, how much that. are we paying in ads? How much am I bringing home? What, like, how am I taking care of my support coaches and my team? And do these numbers actually make sense? And if they don't, then what do I need to adjust? Um, but that's also a point that you were talking there. about earlier, like circling back to earlier, where people are doing everything and they're throwing money at everything. Like, I'm doing ads. I'm yeah. doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. When you do everything it can be difficult to know which one of these things is working. Like which is the one that is converting, that is bringing the people right. in, that's actually giving you that return on investment. Because sometimes you, you do the things because everyone's always done the things. Has, has anyone ever asked why are we doing this thing? <laughs> so this is how the hyper productivity, this is how we start to replicate that corporate culture and the hyper productivity in our businesses, because being a solopreneur air quotes, um, has a level of pride, right? Like I do all the things. And then when it's time to hire somebody, we're like, no, I can do it better myself. And it's like, okay, so if you're going to be onboarding all of these clients and handling client relations and handling billing and doing your marketing and when are you going to coach or do your service, right? And you're probably not, there's something has to give. So yes. it's either family or rest or your health. A lot of people, I mean, I did this, like the first thing to go is usually taking care of yourself, going to the gym. I don't have time. I have to jump right into work. I have all these clients, right? And then you feel like shit. And now here your mental health is affected. Like it's just this huge snowball and or family. So now your relationship or your kids, right? Or, or something in your business, people aren't getting served at the level that you've promised. And so now they're unhappy. So like something has to Something has to give, but the solopreneurs wear this as a sense of pride. Oh, I do all of this by myself. And that is what will lead, will lead you to burnout. Not if it's just a matter of time. And I love the point about, I could do it better myself. Like mm. it's, it's sometimes people, I hear people go, oh, my VA is terrible or whatever. And it's kind of like, are you actually giving them are you handing over anything or are you being like that new mom who won't let anyone touch the newborn and the then helicopter. you can play that nobody <laughs> yeah. helps your helicopter mom to your business right 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 and it's kind right. of like you know to hire someone to whichever area you want support in and 
and knowing like there's a level of knowing so you know you're not being taken for a ride because sometimes you know you yeah. hire someone who's like yeah. charging you the earth and then you look at what they're doing and you're like that that you know what am I paying you for <laughs> exactly there are moments of that but there are right. also times where you just like do you do you need to know like the person who helps me with my website always makes me loom videos I love her I love her dearly because she's like if I'm ever busy or not around or something happens or I'm hit by a bus then you know what to do I'm thinking <laughs> I'm never going to watch these loom videos like you know but if I am ever stuck it's good to know and I do appreciate it and I do have the, the the system so if you know she did leave or we didn't work together whatever like I do I do appreciate that but it's just kind of like I hire you because I don't know how to do this nor do I want to <laughs> right well so this goes right back to that conversation of we are taught to be employees and so these are next level business problems that no one's taught like this isn't this is one thing that you know we talk about in my mastermind as people are moving from solopreneur into like stepping into that CEO role because if you're taught how to be an employee there's like the elite few right who then move into management but a lot of people don't want to fucking be managers like a lot of people are like oh I'd prefer to be an employee but then they go start their own businesses Yes. Right. And so they never received the management training, which we're not taught. And I feel like it's for a reason because they want more employees. I don't mind if the cat comes on camera. It's most welcome. Oh, he's trying to get outside. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. If you're listening um, to the podcast, not watching on YouTube, uh, Shannon's cats are, you know, are around and I just, I love animals all all animals <laughs> welcome on my show. <laughs> He'll start scratching the window. So I was trying to get it before I did that. Um, yeah. So we don't know how to manage our own teams. So we're not going to be able to tell them what we, I mean, I, I struggled with this. I was a horrible fucking boss. I really had to learn how to um, get what was in my brain out to the person, let them actually do their job. If this is what they do, I hope that I've hired somebody who actually does this better than I do. And so I have to step back, right? And trust that. I have to trust that I've hired well. I have to trust that it's hard. Like it is a whole mindset process to trust somebody with your baby, right? I just wish that we would like not make this so personal. Like our business is like, it's just a fucking business, right? Like we're marketing, we're selling. Here's a product. Here's an idea I had. Let's see if people want it versus like, oh, this is my heart and my soul like poured into my work it just creates such a enmeshment a it's it's Absolutely. a weird it's a weird kind of enmeshment because there's kind of like and also too what's the word there's a name for it parasocial relationships like yeah. because you follow yeah. someone online or you listen to their podcast or you watch their videos and you kind of yes. think you know them and it's like <laughs> yeah it's weird you, you know <laughs> people know the note coach but they don't know Suzanne okay. so yeah <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah, and I do say on my show, I'm socially awkward. I'm very introverted. I'm very different in person. And when people meet me, they're like, "Holy fuck!" I'm like, "I warned you." Like, <laughs> I wear my earbuds. I don't make eye contact. I really don't like to be out and about. Like, oh, no. it's so funny. But you get to an idea of people. But I think also too, depending on the the container of coaching and stuff, there's weird lo love bombing and you know, like there's all sorts of weirdness in coming into the industry. But as you said when your business is your baby, that's not healthy for anyone. Because like, if someone says one of my actual kids, like my human kids is ugly or whatever, like I'd be like, let's go. So if someone says about your business and you, you're making a business, of course you're going to have feelings, you know, right. because you're protective, you're protective, yeah. of, you know, but if you're just like, Hey, hold it lightly. Like I'm going to fumble fuck my way forward and, and see if he's got legs rather yeah. than like i i launch things very leanly i put it out there i have like a google doc is anyone actually going to buy this before i do the sales page the copy the words the photos and whatever and i had a friend recently love her dearly she spent a better part of 20 grand creating this whole platform membership this and that and the other launched it and had like two people join and i was like mm -hmm you know all that money all that time like money you can get money back but time you never can 
And it's like, yeah. does, does this thing even fly? Do people actually even want this? And who are you polling? Because people will be like, oh, yeah, that sounds great. I love it. But are they actually, here's my payment. Right, great. Put a deposit <laughs> down and we'll get this going. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I think also too, it? viability too. Like if you're running something, I need this many. Like I need 10 or I need 20 yeah. or I need six. Otherwise, it's not viable. Because I think sometimes that too, it's like, you know, you, yeah, there's so many areas we can go with this. But yeah. back into the the anti-hustle thing, if anyone's listening to this and it's like, okay, I'm hearing you, I, I do kind of procrastinate Canva and I'm not actually even really good at Canva. Um, <laughs> I laugh. I'm terrible at Canva. I don't do totally. any image stuff. My Anything I make is so janky. <laughs> My son, so who's nine, is excellent at it. And one day, he that's what he wants to do for a thing. And he makes beautiful things. I was like, you know, one day, yep, totally will Hired. hire you. And it's <laughs> yeah. so funny too, because he does a few custom things for people and they're trying to like haggle him on price. And I'm like, no, no mates rates so you say normally 50 bucks but for you a hundred <laughs> i was like you <laughs> double it anyway back to the question i was going to ask if people are like okay i am guilty of this where would you suggest they start with knowing what thing mm. to focus in on mm-hmm. i mean obviously first it's foremost, going to depend on the person but you know yeah. in general i would just say just in general i mean first and foremost like sales is about relationships. So if you're not focusing on building relationships with people, and that's not a primary function of your business, whether that is building a referral network, showing up on social media, getting people in the DMs, inviting people into conversations, um, having freebies where you're where you're getting people into your funnel so that you can nurture them off of social media. If you're if that's not like a primary thing that you're focusing on, then that needs to shift because sales are all about the relationships. And I would say even right now, I mean, this is something that I've been talking to lots of coaches about the the industry is really changing in terms of sales in terms of launching, people got really fucking burned, right? There was like a boom in 2020. I mean, my business blew up in 2020, 2021. I more than doubled my revenue, right? In a year, two years, things have leveled back out, if not dropped back down. Like so many people are not where they were last year. Um, I think people have smartened up in terms of their, they just have more discernment. They're watching these like fancy marketers and they're questioning, right? Like, are you actually going to deliver? Or do you actually have what I need? Um, so the way to counter that is to build genuine relationships and to show people and teach people, um, you know, the things like show your expertise online, help them get wins, help them move their business or their relationship or whatever you're coaching around forward. So giving them tips, giving them resources, right? That's how you're really going to establish yourself as the go-to person, sharing your story, connecting that to your business. That's all relationship building. I love that. And I love how you said, you know, with the freebie or whatever, like to nurture the relationship off social media, to nurture it. Because I think sometimes people invest so much time creating their freebie. Like if I just position the Canva thing three quarters of a degree to the left, and if I try this font and not that font, like the making of the freebie takes all of their time, energy, and effort, but then who's going to find the freebie? Like, you know, it's like people need to see the thing and that can be iterated, reiterated, changed, shifted as you go. But, and also once you've got them to sign up for it, like the number of people who have like, I've got all these people who've never actually emailed them. And then it's like, well, well, nurturing, conversing, as you said, whether DMs, I don't do DMs personally, but you do you, I do do email, but you know, some way that you're connecting, you know, networking in your business, chatting to people, other people, giving advice and suggestions and, and growing that. So people who, who know who you are, 
podcasting, whether guesting or having your own show, I'd say guesting in the beginning because having your own show, once again, if you've got a show, then you need to attract listeners. So that's work. But guesting, you can go and guest on other people's shows. Then you get to practice talking about what it is that you do. And I think mm-hmm. all these things are overlooked when people, as you said, procrastinate brand because that feels like productivity back to the employee days. I produce this today. Whereas if you go and have coffee chats, connections, conversations, give value, then you can't show as much what you produced. But then the other right. thing with entrepreneurship, how it's different to to business, uh, to yeah, employment is employees, you get the steady check regardless. Whereas yeah. entrepreneurship, there can be nothing. And then there can be this big feast. <laughs> I did then- all that work and there's nothing, right? And I mean, this is where mindset work comes in. One of the huge things that, you know, I talk to my clients about is brags and celebrating and like celebrate everything. Did you send out an email? Did you put up a post? Did you engage with people? Did you, right? Because we we stop giving ourselves credit for the things that'll actually move our business forward. And so whether you're writing this in your journal every day, you're keeping a log. One of the things that I've done is also just like keep a log of what I've been doing throughout the day. So I can see where I'm, I mean, I see where I ping pong around and fuck around a lot, (laughs) but I can also see two hours. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) I need a nap. That bed is just looking way too. And then the cats are cute anyway. So, um, but like I can work, I can get on my phone and put up a post or go engage in a group or go, right? So like you can combine rest, resting activities with work activities. I mean, I work from the beach. I live across the street from the beach. So I can go do that there, right? But like you have to give yourself credit and make everything count because we don't have anybody coming over our shoulder and being like, hey, I saw that email that you sent out. Good job, that's gonna help. Hey, I saw the post and all that engagement or maybe no engagement, right? But just trusting that people are seeing it. And so we have to be our biggest cheerleaders because no one's here to do it for us. And also to follow through and not give up on yourself. Like if you're launching something or if you're like, I'm going to send six emails about my new thing and you send three emails and you get crickets, you're like, nobody cares. You never know, like they they talk about data and touch points and how many times people need to see something. It's funny, there's these, hot pink Skechers shoes that I've seen for like the last year. And I keep seeing them and I walk past the store and I'm like, I'm going to get those one day. And anyway, the other day they're on special. I was like, today's a day. So I go in there and they have my freaking size, did they? So then I was like, that's okay. I'm going to find them online. But you know, but it's all to say like you, you never know. And when you quit on yourself, Oh, it didn't happen instantly. And I think that's the other thing when we see online, (sighs) the overnight success, that's 20 years in the making. Like it's we, so, we don't I see about, that. I talk about this all the time. Like I'm really into fitness too. And like going to the gym and I have, I've talked about this on my podcast, but like the parallels between fitness and business are just plentiful. I had so much to say. I had two episodes about it. Um, you can have but, a whole show literally just dedicated to that because absolutely. you think about it, you go to the gym, you see the really fit people like bicep curling these huge weights. You Years. can't even get off the rack. And then you're totally. like, oh, I'm just not supposed to be fit. I'm going to go and eat chips. Like right. no. <laughs> one thing that I've been doing, which is it was more for like humor, but like for me, accountability is huge. So I track my, you know, I have an app and I track my workouts and I was like, I'm just going to share these in my stories just for like my own accountability. Right. But then people are messaging me. Thank you so much for sharing this. Like I've been getting out and doing more, you know, and going and working out. And, but one thing that I've been doing is taking pictures pictures of so I've been getting off the internet like bodybuilding poses <laughs> and then I've been doing those poses <laughs> in the locker room let me tell you <laughs> like full body flexing you can't there's you can't see anything they like there's no muscle definition there's so these we highly highly overestimate ourselves and underestimate ourselves and so these are elite athletes, right. Who were oiled up. They are, um, dehydrated. That's why their muscles during show prep. Right. So that's why their muscles and like the, you can see literally everything. 
I've been working out consistently for like, I don't know, 18 months or, you know, maybe like a year for me to think that I could even flex like this person who literally sleeps, eats, breathes, like that's their job is this show prep is fucking ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Right. But this is what people are doing with their businesses. Oh yeah. But also too, some of it is because it's promised. Like you do hear some people going, I was on the bare bones of my ass sleeping in my car. But even now cars are so expensive with the cost of living. Like I was living in a cardboard box and then I put everything on my credit card, which I thought was going to bounce, but somehow it got through and I bought this course. And now I have eight figures and I have my private jet. Like, you know, and then people are like, Oh, I could do that. And then it doesn't work out. So sometimes shocker it's marketed that way (laughs) totally we don't have that discernment or this thinking of like okay because like you know there's yeah anyway all that to say some but but you know this the point that you're making like um recently that deadpool movie came out and there's that scene with wolverine like hugh jackman talked through his prep for that scene where three days he didn't eat anything he was dehydrated the lighting the angles the whatever and then as you said, like even people who are quite fit and work out as yourself for 18 months. And then there's, I I just, I think, you know, give yourself a minute or or, or a little while and not comparing yourself because they've trained, they've eaten, they've had the team. They've not saying don't bother, but it's like when you're in business, if you're a starting out or you're a solopreneur and you're, and you're learning from, you know, Amy Porterfield, Marie Folio, who have the team, as you said, the copywriters, the, the, this, the, that, the other, um and also people know who they are because they've been in the industry for a long time ever ancient they're ancient (laughs) they're the the ancestors of online marketing (laughs) so it's like sometimes I think just staying in the game no one ever talks about like just staying through the ups and downs the ins and outs the booms the feasts the famines and just like I'm in this and sometimes like you do have to go get a job. I had to pause my business in the middle of it, right? In 2019, I had to pause my business and get a contract job to stabilize my income, to get out of debt, right? And then I got back into my business, but I was still in the coaching industry. But like some people need to take the pressure off of their businesses, themselves, their clients. Because if you're getting on every sales call and you're like, I got to fucking get hired or I can't pay my rent, you're going to start doing sleazy sales tactics. You're going to start like, you're, you're just, your integrity gets compromised, right? And it's so, like energetic BO. People can sense uh-huh. that. They can sense that like, oh my gosh, that without this. And also too, depending on what you do, it's kind of like, if you're selling me this luxury lifestyle that you supposedly have, but if I don't sign up for this thing, then you can't afford your power bill. Okay. There's, there's something not math in here. <laughs> it's, I got a lot to say about that. <laughs> yeah. So we could talk for hours. We literally could. But why don't you let the listeners know what it is you do, where they can find you. I know you have a quiz or a checklist or something. Yes. And you have yes. a podcast. So tell us about all the things. Okay. So you can find me at shannonwhaley.com, um, at the Shannon Whaley on Instagram. Um, so I'm known everywhere as the anti-hustle business coach. I have a Facebook group. So if you go to antihustlebiz.com, then there you can find the anti-hustle business checklist. So that is going to walk you through what you need to have, what you will eventually need to have, what is nice to have. And so it covers the different stages of where you are in your business. So if you're just getting started, you know, obviously you need a way to get paid. You need a calendar, right? Eventually you're going to need a website. Eventually you'll need the branding eventually. So it takes you through those different parts. Um, what else? I have a podcast. We just got started. It's the anti-hustle business podcast. So I talk about integration weeks, rest, how to take care of yourself while you're running your business, what to be focusing on to get clients, um, make the money. Um, like I said, we cover the fitness and the business aspect to lots of, I'm going to totally stuff, check so. those two episodes out. Cause that sounds amazing. Yeah. And I've, yeah. I've had that conversation <laughs> a number of times, you know, fitness and, and business and people tend to sacrifice their health for wealth and yep. then they build the wealth, but then their health falls down. So then they need to take the time off. So then they're just ping ponging between the two. Absolutely. Yeah. So how do we do this concurrently? How do we do this together? 
Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. That sounds um, fabulous. Yeah. So those are the, we have anti-hustle business school to help people get started. And that is enrolling year round. So lots of different things, depending on where you are in your business. Yeah. I love that. And I love yeah. the, the checklist. And as you said, what do you need now? <laughs> a calendar mm-hmm. system and a way for people to pay you. And what are you working towards? Because also too, then you can start to budget or plan or know, Absolutely. am I on track? Because as you said, when you're employed, you know, you're on track. Your employer says, Hey, go do this thing. When you're self-employed, especially if you get sucked into some of these questionable business practices on the internet. <laughs> you're like, and it's all important, especially if you're neuro spicy, everything is important right fucking now. So you just like, don't know what to focus on. And so you just go take a nap instead. Yeah. Yeah. You go and do something random <laughs> instead because, you know, and I think that's yeah. a, just a, it's a calming thing. It's kind of, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me, Shannon. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now. <laughs>